y'all you cool cats and kittens out there, and also humans too. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How are you? I'm Bob. This is Will. Welcome back. Hey. Not Kevin Kenson. Nope, nope. <laughs> the name says Kevin Kenson. <laughs> Will Wolf. Damn, damn it. it. That's that's why there I put go. the damn it at the end of my Twitter handle. So everybody knows. It's not because Will Wolf was taken? No, it's because. You opted for want- damn it? I did. What a I weirdo. I wanted it because I wanted to emphasize that it was me. Will Wolf, damn it. <laughs> anyway. Will, how was your week? <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> Just had another kid. No big deal. No, New Game hey. Plus, as I called it. <laughs> That's, it's, I don't like that at all. <laughs> I'm sure he won't appreciate that either. <laughs> Look, he's got to get a sarcastic sense of humor real fast. Kevin's in the chat. Hi, Kevin. Sorry, you've been, hey, Kevin, Kev- I'm sorry you've been replaced. You're fired from the podcast. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I appreciate Kevin coming on last week. I such short. Yeah. I had plenty of time to 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 get some to to get Ke- to tell Kevin to come on the podcast. For whatever reason, I waited until yeah. like an hour before the podcast. Well, I <laughs> honestly, I had intention intended to make it onto the show. Oh, hell regardless no. of whether or not you were going to replace you're going to have a, a substitute on i would have just popped up on in the discord but the problem was they kept us in the hospital for much longer than we needed to be mm-hmm. we didn't get home to like six that day right and like i was falling asleep by like 7 30 so yeah not uh I, it, it, listen you hadn't you had a good excuse you had a doctor's note yes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> wasn't worth it um anyway you're back now yay yes i am and back on the bs as they say (laughs) yes i'm realizing now where's my there it is just trying to futz with the overlay guys we got a lot to talk about today um we got uh i want to talk about all the stuff that we know about the steam deck because there's still a lot of steam deck hype going on right now and uh, there's some new news, and I figured it'd be a great opportunity to round that all up for everybody today. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, some some Sony di- Sony did a cool thing yesterday. They did a cool little thing. Sony's little like trick. anything you can do, I can do as well. Not better. Foreshadowing. Not better. I can't do it but better, but I can do it. I can't do it better. <laughs> do it yeah uh we also have nintendo suing more people or 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 doing or getting people in legal trouble again yeah and uh and yacht club for the first time since like 2013 no 20 yeah they have a new ip and it's crazy yeah. and it's an internally made it's crazy um, but first, it's the start of a new month. Happy February, yep. everybody. February 1st, which means if you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, you got yourself some free games, my friend. As long as yes. you stay subscribed to those, uh, to those services. Yes, sir. So, starting today, on the PlayStation side of things, you get EA Sports UFC 4 on the PlayStation 4. You get Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, a Wonderland's one-shot adventure on PS4. Okay. And Planet Coaster Console Edition on PS5. Cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so look, I mean, well, actually, I think Planet Coaster was like, wasn't it free on like Steam or something for a hot minute? It something. might have been. It was like it, it was like dirt cheap for a minute. I know a lot of people are yeah. are down with with a lot of people, especially people who don't play games that much. They play like The Sims and maybe Planet Coaster or or, yeah. or Roller Coaster Tycoon, which oh, has yeah, turned into say, Planet Coaster. Is it the same franchise or is it is this a different I, thing? I think the people who made Roller Coaster Tycoon made Planet Coaster. Okay. And then they made a new roller coaster tycoon, but it sucked and like Planet Coaster is like okay. the new thing. So uh, uh 
Got I'm it. not. Got it. It's kind of like I, the way I understand it is it's like Harvest Moon. Okay. How like Harvest Moon isn't cool anymore, but then they like spun off and made their own thing, and like the 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 own thing is cool. Well, I think because in Japan it's called something else, and in America it's called it was called Harvest Moon, but then the original company, I forgot I forgot the name. I think it's like Song of Seasons or whatever. Yeah, they started releasing it in the U.S. as Song of Seasons, but Natsume, who owns the name Harvest Moon, kept making Harvest Moon games, and they're all bad. Yeah, that's yes. Yes. Yeah. My understanding is Planet Coaster shoveled out games that were bad, but the people who made those games made Planet Coaster and Planet Coaster is good. That's that's my understanding. Okay. So so maybe if you like roller coaster tech, if you like murdering people in an amusement park, yes. maybe you'll enjoy Planet Coaster. If you have PlayStation Plus, you could try it on your PlayStation. It's included in your subscription. Yes. Anyway, uh, ugh, cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I'm not. I'm not thrilled with the PlayStation this month. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's always weird when a, like a an annualized sports game is included in the uh, yeah. in the lineup. Um, I've heard UFC four is good from people who like UFC games. All three of you. Um. Uh, and Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep is not the new game that's coming out. Okay. I, that confused me. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Because you know how. Yeah. So wait, what is it? Is it DLC? It, it's like a standalone DLC for like a past Borderlands game. Oh. Oh, yeah. so it's not Tiny Tina's standalone game. Okay. Yeah, this is Weird. just like a, this is like a spinoff. This is like their version of uh Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's essentially the same game, but like a standalone DLC expansion pack. Does that make sense? Yes. No, I understand. It's I'm I'm just I have this face on because it's it's a stupid thing to have in the PlayStation Plus thing. <laughs> well, it's probably to generate hype for the game people actually want to play. Wow, I'm so hype. Reason. I'm so hyped up. Anyway, on the Xbox side of things. <laughs> Here we are, Xbox. Not okay. looking much better at all. Actually, worse maybe. <laughs> uh, so for the entire month of February on Xbox One and Series X, you get Broken Sword Five: Serpent's Curse, uh, and then from February 16th to March 15th, you get Aerial Knights Never Yield. Oh wait, on the X that's a yes. Weeb game people like. Aerial no, it's Knights. not Weeb. It's not Weeb. No, it's not Weeb. But Oh, I did play the, I played the demo of it on Switch, and it's very good. Oh no, I didn't like it. That's that what? game. Yeah, that's the game I, I was really interested in. Yeah, I was really interested in that game. I thought it was gonna be good, and I really didn't like the demo. I didn't and like it at all. I thought it was cool. <laughs> I thought it was just a neat. It's it's essentially just an endless runner. Right. Um But I thought it. I thought it did that concept pretty well. I thought it had weird, uh, uh like a, uh, like the way it like tries to tell you what button to hit i think yeah. it's i think it's weird and and doesn't really work right you have to like kind of like decode it at fits it's, it's not immediately like like clear what you need to do yeah maybe i'll give it another shot now that it's free who am i kidding mm. i have no time i have two kids but right. from february 1st to the 15th on the xbox 360 which you can play on your modern consoles uh from the first to the 15th is hydrophobia and from the 16th to the 28th is a band of bugs. What a weird, what a weird month. So I remember when hydrophobia came out because there were a lot of articles written about how it had the most impressive and realistic water physics of any game released at that time. Problem is the rest of the game is bad. What a that's another like like who cares? It's like a yeah. shooting game with with realistic water physics. Like why I did mean, you why did you put that much effort into a shooting into the water physics of a shooting game? Well, clearly they needed something to stand apart in the era of like Gears of War and Max Payne 3 and you know shooters that people actually wanted to play. Very um that's very weird, but okay. Cool. Yeah. Good good for you. 
unfortunately, you should have put up a little more work into the rest of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Um. All right, so that's all the free stuff you can get if you have PlayStation Plus or Xbox uh, Live. What about Game Pass? Anything new on Game Pass this month? Uh, Crossfire X was the biggest new game being uh, being added to Game Pass. I saw. What the hell is that? That was the game where the trailer did uh had like a soft piano cover of X Go and Give It to You by DMX. Of course, of course, that one. Yeah. Uh okay. Contrast, I've heard of that. That was like a it was like a one of the first PlayStation 4 exclusives, I think. Uh, I think so, yeah. Uh oh, oh Ark, Ark of survival. Course. Yeah. Okay. Weird. Weird month. People don't care about February. Yeah. Is Bob using short uh, earbuds? Yes, he is. I'm not using the ones that uh Will got me for Christmas though. Will got me fancy ones for Christmas. Yes, I believe uh, the ones I got you are your phone headphones. <laughs> yeah, they, honestly, they're the same ones as these, but for the phone. So, so I, I have saw, ones on my desk and ones in my pocket and my jacket. I saw also like you had in your wish list a version of those headphones with the lightning port. <laughs> Is that yeah, even a thing? Well, I just, I think those are Sennheisers. Okay. Uh, I don't know how good those are. Um, yeah. but, uh, I just use the adapter. I use the lightning adapter. Yeah. And I figured this way. My life is totally fine. For more, for more things. I was on the train on Sunday to see you and, and your child and your child. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, I had a little conundrum. I kind of want, I, this never happens to me. Will I kind of wanted to play Pokemon. I wanted to play oh. Arceus because Arceus just came okay. out and I hate, right, let yeah. me tell you something. We're going to talk about it later. I hated mm -hmm. that game for like three hours. Oh. The first three hours oh, no. is a drag. Oh no. But after I played it for about six hours, okay, I started to get the itch to want to play it. So I was like, let's see how much of an itch I have. Am I going to bring my switch on the train with me or, okay. Am I gonna play Genshin Impact on my phone? And I played I, what I did. Will was I played Genshin Impact on my phone? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Pokemon didn't win out, but you know what? The problem there was the convenience of having the phone. I didn't need to bring yeah. the Switch. I just had. I could just do it. I could just play it on my phone. Right. Anyway, that's where I'm at. That's my life. Well, I know you had a lot of exciting things happen, but for me, the yeah. biggest the biggest controversy in my life was whether or not I was going to bring my Switch on the train. Genshin Impact or Pokemon? It's really tough. It's a really tough yeah. decision. Oh, I know. Anyway, Ooh, hey, speaking of bringing things, little portable, powerful <laughs> things, maybe if I had a Steam Deck, the decision would be a little more clear. I could play Genshin Impact on my Steam Deck if I... Whoa, Mobile hotspot to my phone, maybe. Valve announces launch plans for the Steam Deck. Whoa, here it is. Wow. So we, that, I want to try to talk about as much as we know about the Steam Deck as possible because that is coming out at the end of the month. Yes. Uh, Valve has announced that the Steam Deck will launch on February 25th. In a blog post, Valve confirmed that those who reserved a unit will receive a confirmation email by, by that day. Um, after which they will have 72 hours to purchase the handheld or give it up to the next person. Wait, uh, what? Wait, wait, what? I'll read it again. After which they will... A, ha yeah, no, please, please, please. In a blog post, mm -hmm. Valve confirmed that those who reserved a unit will receive a confirmation by email that day. On the 25th? After which they have... On the 25th. Okay. After which... They will have 72 hours to purchase the unit or it will be given up to the next person. Okay, so it's not actually launching on the 25th. It's giving you the opportunity to purchase it on the 25th. Correct. That's, this is so annoying. I thought it was coming out the 25th. God. You are you already pre-ordered or, or reserved it rather, right? I, yeah, well, yeah, but like it's, I didn't pay it. I didn't pay for the whole thing i just put my reserve in i'm i'm in the first wave okay i have a content schedule to keep do you understand i look i understand 
Does Valve understand? I have the question. I I had a conversation with my manager Mm because I have ads, you know, and I got to put them on certain videos and some people want to be on certain videos. And I was like, this would be a good, uh, the Steam Deck would be a great video for this. Or, Or I also have this and I have this. And they're like, okay, what dates? And I was like, I, I don't know. I mean, like, they're all they all just say they're coming. None of them have a date. Like, yeah. so this was before the Steam Deck gave a date. The Steam Deck just gave this date like a few days ago, actually January twenty sixth. Yeah. Um, before that, the the Ein Odin didn't have a date. The mm-hmm. Steam Deck didn't have a date. Um. What else? I'm getting this this freaking uh, Aya Neo friggin' Pro, whatever the thing is that Wood made a video right. on. That I have no idea where that is. Um, the little stupid crank uh, oh, gaming the device. Play date. None of those have dates. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like I, I I don't know. Anyway, uh, good to hear that uh, it's. On tw- the 25th, we will have the opportunity to purchase. Oh, and then they'll be shipping out the 28th. So, yeah, Steam- s- so it's still not going to... It's going to be the 28th when it will leave Valve, and then still who knows when it comes to my door. Steam Decks uh, will begin shipping on February 28th, and more confirmation emails will go out each week. Valve also announced that impressions of the Steam Deck from members of the press will begin will begin to show up soon, and then more wi- widely on February 25th. Oh, my video is going to be late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, the Steam Deck was originally planned to release in December, but Valve delayed the launch, citing component manufacturing snafus. Uh, there are 64 gig, 526 gig, and 512 gig models, uh, with some additional perks coming with the pricier models, such as the an anti-glare etched screen, on the 512 gig model and a Steam community bundle for the top two models. Uh, so That's I... not all they announced. Oh, okay. No, go ahead. I got the top... No, I got the mid. I yes. prefer the mid model. I decided that because there was a lot of people talking about how uh, the lowest tier one, the, the, the $400 one, doesn't come yeah. with an NVMe uh, uh, drive, and and it yeah. was and it was debatable how easy it would be to put one in. Uh, now we know that the baseline one has the port for an NVMe, so you could just put your own yeah. in. And uh, people were talking about how SD cards aren't going to be fast enough, uh, but uh, they're kind of Apparently wrong. They are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's just that. Like I understand for like they're not as fast as NVMe's, right? For sure. But for all of the games, I'm probably gonna want to play on this thing. The SD card would probably have been just fine, especially also, for yeah. emulators. Also, you got to remember, like a lot of games on Steam were optimized for hard drives. Like they came out in the hard drive era, so <laughs> whatever you put in there will be fine. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that I think will definitely... Be- the only game that I'm going to play that will definitely benefit from the NVMe is Warzone. And I don't even right. know if that's going to work good on this at all, even with that. So, I mean, otherwise, I probably would have been just fine with the with an SD card. Right. Uh, uh, f- but anyway. Well, let's skip around a second, because you said Warzone. Uh, Valve has announced uh, the Steam Deck has more than 100 verified playable games based on a new list. And about 60 of the games are at the highest tier of compatibility. So Valve has really been trying to make sure that developers have everything they can to make their games run great on the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is Linux-based, so games have to kind of be uh it's i have to be very careful how i word this because i'm going to be wrong no matter what <laughs> people yeah. are going to tell me i'm, I'm yeah, doing no, a bad it, job it's, it's gonna yeah they have to be kind of like translated or like converted or like like the, valve gives the developers tools to make it a very easy transition to run off of linux uh they have their own system that uh will just 
basically translate the games to run on Linux and it should be just fine. But uh, if you want to make sure your game is optimized, you have to do a little bit of work on your end as a developer. Um, but Valve is trying to make it as easy as possible. And Valve has their own uh, uh, system on, on, on Steam that says whether or not a game is verified to run on Steam Deck, if it'll run great. And and they have their own sort of tests. So it it the way it works is it'll be verified, meaning it's good to go. It'll be somewhat good to go, meaning like maybe there's a mini game that's not going to work or like a controller situation is like a little weird. Uh, uh, then it, it'll say something like kind of works. And then there's not yeah. going to work at all. If, if there's like a game breaking part of the game that, that just doesn't translate well. Yeah. Um, uh, so a- according to data polls from steam user, steam DB over the weekend, valve has graded 106 games for the steam deck for steam deck compatibility. While the results aren't available on, on the steam store just yet, you can check out which games will work with your Steam Deck according to this fan curated list, and there's a link uh, in the article. Right. Uh, okay, so so, so here's here's the list right here. It's it's a, it says verified games, playable games, or unsupported games. That's the right. tier that I was trying to explain. So verified means you're good to go. It's going to be awesome. Playable means yeah. something's going to be weird, and unsupported means it's game breaking or it's going to be a really bad time. Right now, 60 of the 106 games tested are verified, meaning they should run on the Steam Deck with no adjustments. Some of the some of the highlights are indie gems like Cuphead, Celeste, The Messenger, and Death Store, as well as some more performance-heavy games like Death Stranding, Portal 2, Whoa. Dark Souls 2 and 3, and more. 41 of the games tested were playable, and just five were unsupported. Of the five unsupported games, Four are VR titles. So far, this bodes well for the Steam Deck, as nearly every tested game so far will apparently work, apparently work well with the system. Uh, let me jump in. There's, there's, on this fan verified list, there are 258 now. Oh. Uh, and there's a lot of unsupported, but uh, Rainbow Six Siege is unsupported. Oh, wow. anti cheat. So. The anti-cheat wow. software on a lot of these games don't translate well to, to Linux, and I that did, might did he- that might not be good for Warzone. No, I did hear there's something wrong with like I should have looked that up if there was a, so, a, something. I remember seeing a news article about anti-cheat being a problem for something. Yeah, that's what it is. It, it's it's yeah. uh, it doesn't translate well for 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 them. Has nobody tried Warzone? What the hell, dude? That's all I care about. What about Genshin Impact? <laughs> <laughs> um, so there seems to be a lot of like Hades, Hollow Knight. I mean, obviously that those should be pretty obviously, easy. Yeah, more Genital like jousting. Oh, good. That worked. God of War. God of War is a pretty big deal that that works. Yeah. Uh, uh Death Loop, Dark Souls Three. Uh, Dishonored, Death Stranding, Dead Cells, that Celeste. That there's a there's a lot of uh, you're gonna have a great time with this thing. It looks like, <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's what it is. It's um, there was an article sometime last week about how the Steam Deck will support Epic's easy anti cheat system. Okay, but apparently, uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> Like implementing it. Oh, the chat saying Warzone and Genshin are not on Steam. Duh, Bob, oh. dumbass. Oh, because Warzone, you probably have to use Battle.net or whatever stupid. Yeah. Uh, Activision. Nonsense. Why am I getting this thing then? <laughs> because Bob, it's the Switch killer. You have to jump yeah. ship, otherwise your channel is dead. So they did say you can put Windows on here, but it's probably gonna be a bad time yes. putting Windows on here. Yeah. Otherwise, of the Steam games here, there's some great stuff. Uh, Sekiro. Oh, yeah. it, it looks like it's going to be able to run pretty high-powered games. Don't worry, Kevin. Octopath Traveler works. <laughs> Metal Gear Rising will, so you can replay that one. Your favorite Metal Gear game? I mean, that's not the worst Metal Gear game. <laughs> it just might be the stupidest. 
Uh, of the unsupported games, yeah, it's it's a lot of them say anti cheat. Yeah. Jump force. <laughs> that's not an all. That's not even all online anymore. They killed that. Rogue oh, yeah, company. I, I for I thought Jump Force was a platformer for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it was that fighting game. Um. So it looks like a lot of the stuff you're gonna want to play that's on Steam is gonna be just fine. Yeah. Oh, and they do list uh on the on the uh playable ones they list what is a problem. Yeah. Uh, a way out is playable controller glyphs match. Oh, that's a big issue. Uh, the controller like like symbols in game when they yeah. prompt you to press a controller button, that has to match what the Steam Deck has, or else oh. it's gonna be weird. So that will yeah. qualify as playable if if that doesn't match up right. Yeah. Uh, interface text is legible. That means it it might be like a too small mm -hmm. default con configuration is performant first time setup requires active internet connection that's a pretty they went really in depth on what is what qualifies as yeah. playable versus a uh, verified uh launcher interaction issues and default controller configuration not fully functional okay so you have to do a little work. that's i like this i like this a lot because <laughs> These are problems that I have with portable emulators is that you have to do a little bit of work to them. You have to like change if you got to open up like if I want to play an N64 game, I have to open the N64 app on the emulator. And sometimes I got to configure the controls for certain games. And sometimes some games just don't work. Sometimes I got to tweak little things here and there. So here I'll be able to immediately see if this is going to be playable when I download it or if I got to do some shit and it'll tell you what shit you got to do. So that's pretty and, awesome. And remember this, this website right now, this is a fan made site. This is all information that will be available on steam. You know, if not when the steam deck launches, then like sometime around its launch. Right. So all the, yeah, you won't have to go far looking for this stuff. This will be on steam. Right. Right. Controller glyphs mismatch is a pretty lightweight issue, to be honest. Kind of great to see it addressed anyway. Yeah, but it's enough where, like, the general consumer needs to know about it. Like, yeah, because, uh, you know, every platform, the X button is in a different spot. So, like, if X yeah. gets, if X shows up, people are going to press X. They're not going to realize why it's not working, and they're going to just think that their game is broken. So, the fact that it tells you that there's a problem there, I think that that's really important. Uh, I think a lot of people thought they could just hook it up and use it as a PC. I wonder how fast there will be a new Steam Deck that can run most games. I mean, this could run most games. This is looking yeah, pretty awesome like, to me. Yeah. It, it's it's not a PC, uh, but no. it's doing what you would probably want your Steam Deck PC to do anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also dockable via USB-C. Uh, and you can hook up a mouse and keyboard if you want. Yeah. So you can you can use it uh like a sort of like a PC. Um but anyway, uh oh, and now we have cloud saves. <laughs> yes. Uh I want to go back to the top of the article. Ahead of the Steam Deck's launch, Valve has detailed a new feature for Steam's cloud saves that should carry over your progress to your Steam Deck, from your Steam Deck back to your PC or another or another Steam Deck even when you put the Steam Deck into suspended mode without fully exiting the game. Valve has talked about this intriguing idea before, but now it has a name, Dynamic Cloud Sync. Wow. Here's how it should work. When you put your Steam Deck into sleep mode, Dynamic Cloud Sync will automatically upload all modified uh, save game data to the cloud. Valve explained in a blog post on Monday. Uh, that way, you can... That way you can pick up your save when you sit down at your PC or another device with Steam. The Steam Deck will also automatically download save, uh, save updates when you wake up the device. This feature sounds very handy, and if it works as advertised, it could make a myriad of mobile promises made by the <laughs> Steam Deck feel attainable. Uh, seamless cloud saves is something rivals like the Switch have struggled with. That said... Valve says developers will have to manually enable dynamic cloud sync in their games. 
So it might take time for the feature to be available in some of your favorite titles, and it's guaranteed to require internet connectivity. If Dynamic Cloud Sync isn't enabled, Steam will still track your progress you make on your Steam Deck. However, any user who suspends their deck while, while your game is running and then tries to resume that game on a different device will be prompted to first return to their deck to close the, pro the running process or continue without their most recent uh, save game process. Uh, Marlberg in the chest is how hard to get an emulator on there. So it's, we don't know until we get it. I don't want to yeah. say it. it should be pretty easy. Uh, I heard Retro Game Core talking about how it's it, there's potential that you can just put uh, all your emulation stuff onto an SD card, pop it in, and it'll just open up a whole new OS and do whatever you want. So there's potential that it could be super awesome, but we yeah. won't know until it gets in our hands. Um. Anyway, uh, it's good to see that this cloud saves, so I can just pick the game up where I left off on a PC. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm trying to yeah, find it. Like oh, here it is. I just wanted to show real quick a uh, comparison between the Steam Deck and the Switch. This is the original Switch. It's a big yeah. boy. The screen yeah. is as big as the whole Switch. <laughs> yeah, I think this is just a that's a good remind uh, way to remind people that the Steam Deck is clearly a more enthusiast device. Right. Uh, and the Switch is more of the everyman device. Uh, right. You're not going to see Steam Decks out in the wild as much as you're going to see Switches. Um, you know, it, it, it like the Steam Deck really is for the you know the hardcore enthusiast crowd. These are for people who you know play a thousand hours of League of Legends and want to be able to play it on the toilet. You know, that's not the Switch. Yeah, like um, the Switch is just going to be. It's cheaper and it's going to be. Much easier for people, the 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 average Joe, to pick up and play whatever game they want to play. Uh, the mm -hmm. Steam Deck is an extension of their PC gaming. Uh, yeah. The chat's yelling at you that League of Legends isn't on Steam. See, we don't know anything about PC oh, gaming. For... <laughs> it, this, right. Let me tell you, this deal is getting worse and worse. We're finding out all these PC games that we think are going to be great for this thing aren't going to even be on this thing. Listen, for like... I don't know, like 20 years or whatever, the the only place to really get games on PC was Steam, mm. okay? There were like other stores here and there, like there was EA Origin and Uplay and whatnot, but it all, you know, linked back to Steam to some point. Every game that you wanted to play was on Steam. Nowadays, of course, that's not possible. There's the Epic Store. And there's, you know, like apparently League has their own plays and Battle.net and all this other crap that I just can't keep up with anymore because I'm too old. This is why I play console games because, like, it's so much simpler. I recently started playing games on PC. And, yeah, it is uh, complicated. <laughs> uh, so I also wanted to uh, take a look at their whole thing about uh uh develop their, their whole thing to developers no porting required okay. steam deck runs steam os 3.0 and thanks to proton that's the thing that translates yeah. the game your build will likely work right out of the box to learn more about how to test your game make your game even better on deck or request a developer kit visit the steam work site uh oh that's all it says <laughs> But a Proton is the thing that should be able to make your game work good on their Linux-based Steam OS. Um, right. But again, you listen, if you wanted to play League on this thing, you just have to boot Windows on here. And I suspect yeah. putting Windows on here is going to be pretty easy, but uh, you can't expect, like, your grandma who loves League of Legends to go want to buy this thing and start playing this you know boot windows and start playing league on it out of here i suspect that it'd probably still be easier to just get a freaking laptop and this thing yeah. ain't that cheap uh i mean 400 dollars for the base unit but that thing's not going to be good for throwing windows on there and playing league you yeah. know uh so i don't know i i feel like 
uh, for, for that sort of advanced stuff, we're going to have to wait and see. But but for for regular Steam games, it looks like it's going to be freaking pretty awesome as long as you've got yeah. four to $600 to burn. Uh, anyway, I also wanted to look at the specs real quick. Uh, it's got a big, beefy processor. It's got 16 gigabees of RAM. The storage is really where uh, the different tiers come in. Yeah. You got 64 gigabytes of EMMC for the base unit, the $400 one. A lot of people are going to be comparing this to the Switch and saying that it's only $400. It's only $100 more or $50 more if you get in the OLED. But then you're only going to get 64 gigabytes of regular old storage. Yeah. Um, which I guess and is what the like, Switch has. But. For a lot of like a AAA games, 64 gigabytes of storage is one game. <laughs> yeah. I don't, uh, I don't even think Hitman 3 can fit on the base model. So you get more storage and it's an NVMe drive. So uh, if you go yeah. up up a tier, so 256 gigabytes is pretty good. Uh, you go up a tier more, it's 512 gigabytes, high speed at NVMe. I don't know how much quicker that is, but uh, it also has like an anti-glare screen or like a real glass screen or something. So like the, the screen is a little nicer on like the highest, most expensive one. Yeah. Uh, and I that's think really the base model stuff. has a plastic screen, right? Yeah. Right, right. Uh, yeah, and that's really all you need. Oh, oh, and it, you can buy an, an official dock, and I think I also got that. Uh, the dock isn't going to do anything extra. It's just a yeah. It's just a regular USB C dock. Uh, it's got HDMI two point oh. The dock supports uh, Display Port. Yeah, 1. Display 4. Port 1.4. So it's like legit, like you're going to work like a PC. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ethernet, USB 3.1 and 2.0. And two, 2. So it's got three USB ports in a weird configuration. Yeah. Um, that's pretty crazy. Uh, what else did I want to show? Here's here's the layout. Uh, it's got touch pads on the front. It's real weird. But I mean, I don't know. Like the Steam controller kind of fell flat on its face but they that i think that they think it's necessary for certain games like rts is to have a mouse and this seems to be their answer i just think like yeah. none of the games i want to play require that so yeah. it's kind of just in the way <laughs> but there's also two buttons on the back uh four buttons on the back yes so you have shoulder buttons and then four more buttons for your middle and and ring fingers also, it's a touch. The screen is a touch screen. Yes, that's so. Very there's important. plenty of input options for this thing. Yeah, and I think that's good because they're PC games. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of stuff that are yellow as like you know playable because yeah, you'll probably be able to use either the touch screen or the the the, the track pads. But yeah. it probably just won't be that that good or or optimized for it. So uh, that's good to see that it's like that. And again, if you yeah. put Windows on here, you can use the trackpads to navigate around. Maybe you could put Android on here and you could turn it into a freaking uh uh, 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 uh freaking uh, emulation machine. And that kind of helps to have a well, actually it has a touchscreen. So yeah, you got plenty of options to hack this thing to to your heart's content. Uh, so that's that. That's the Steam Deck. Uh, I'm excited to get mine. Who knows? Probably early March, I guess. Uh, unless they see this video and decide I'm worthy yeah. of one of those review units. That'd be sick, dude. Anyway. Uh, LJWVU says GPU power should be better than a base Xbox One. Give or take a bit from that spec page. It'll play most current Steam games fairly well. You'll just need to use medium slash low settings. Won't be as noticeable on the small screen, though. Uh, I'd imagine the mobile versions of those like specs are probably less powerful or more thermal throttled but i think that it should be more you're right i think that it should be more than enough to 
to play some base Xbox One stuff. Yeah, and I think most games nowadays, you know, especially PC games with the the amount of customization you can do to the graphical settings, you can get them down pretty low right. and it should run fine on a system like this. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh a lot of PC games are meant for all different types of PCs so they yeah. they they do bring them down to pretty you can get them down to pretty low graphical settings. Also this screen's 1080p uh mm-hmm. which is which is pretty good. Uh I think it has 4K output if you really wanted to, but it's probably going to be it's you not a lot of games are going to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe like Hollow Knight, you know, like <laughs> like yeah. certain games are just not going to be able to do that. I wonder what we can get the upscaling to be on like retro stuff. Like, can we get a Super Nintendo game to scale uh, in to 4K? 4K? That would be crazy. Screen is 800p. Did I miss a one? Oh, because it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So that changes it a little bit. Well, no, then it should be bigger. Did I not just see it say 1080p? Oh, it's 1280 by 800. 800p. Oh, so it's technically 720, but longer. Wow. Yeah. All right. I am completely wrong. (laughs) I think I just saw the 800 and assumed. Yeah, because it's got a 1610 aspect ratio, which I know a lot of like higher end uh, computer monitors are, and a lot of people prefer that. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. Well, I mean, it is kind of cool to have a wider field of view. Yeah. But uh, uh, well, it would it wouldn't be wide. It's taller. Oh, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Out of sixteen nine, it's sixteen ten. Maybe you get more UI. Yeah. Circus is ten eighty p on a screen that size would be overkill. Well, I got ten eighty p on my Ein Odin. So, shove that, huh? Full review of the Ein Odin coming out hopefully Thursday. Uh, anyway, sixteen by ten gives you room for your start bar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love having my start bar on screen while I'm <laughs> playing my games. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on from Steam Deck. That's all your Steam Deck news. Yep. That's all we know about the Steam Deck. Uh, now let's uh, let's let's read some notifications here, right? We did yeah. not do that at the top of the show. Nope. Fadud Dud, thanks for the 16 months. R- Royal Egg, thank you for the prime. Snooze attacks, thanks for the hundred bits. Seth Films, thanks for the four months. Nyankus, thank you for the 23 months. Almost two years, boys. Almost. Thank you for the almost two years of continuous support. Luke Anton, thanks for the 28 months. When do you think we'll see a new Switch hardware revision? Tomorrow. <laughs> you missed it. It was yesterday. Yeah, it happened already. Santa was just, he dropped all the presents off. Then he left. Next. Uh, mm, what's next year? 23? 20, yeah, 2023. I, I honestly, it's completely up in the air. It, yeah. it, could, it could be next holiday or, or the following March. Not that, this year. Not this year at all. No, I we're not going to see anything. There's no way we're going to see anything this year. There are so many Switch games coming out this year. They don't need a hardware revision at all. Next holiday, possibly. Mm-hmm. But if it doesn't happen then, it'll happen uh, the following uh, March, possibly. I don't know. Nintendo does whatever the hell they want. Anybody who thinks they know is wrong. Is wrong. <laughs> They're just doing a shot in the dark hoping that yeah. someone will write an article about them uh sparrow the birdie with the 10 months welcome back will thank you it's good to be back inhaling pestilence uh, thank you for the prime subscription all right uh let's talk about what everybody wants to talk about video game acquisitions of billions yes. of dollars a hot new trend in video gaming <laughs> yes uh, this is per Sony's uh, PlayStation blog, uh, written by President and CEO Jim Ryan. Today, I am happy to announce Bungie will be joining the PlayStation family. 
First off, I want to be very clear to the community that Bungie will remain an independent and multi-platform studio and publisher. As such, we believe it makes sense for it to sit alongside the PlayStation Studios organization, and we are incredibly excited about the opportunities for synergy and collaboration between these two world-class groups. I have spent a lot of time with Pete Parsons, Jason Jones, and the Bungie management team to develop the right relationships where they will fully be backed and supported by Sony Interactive Entertainment and enabled to do what they do best, build incredible worlds that captivate millions of people. Bungie, Bungie's world-class expertise in multi-platform development and live game services will help us deliver our vision uh, of expanding PlayStation to hundreds of millions of gamers. Bungie is a great innovator and has developed incredible proprietary tools that will help PlayStation Studios achieve new heights under Herman Hulse leadership. So I used to play a lot of Destiny back in the day. Yes. Uh, Destiny 1 was my jam. Destiny 2, I like played through the main story and beat it and I just wasn't that into it. But uh, I, uh, I mean, Bungie's an amazing studio. And I think mm -hmm. right now they're just kind of releasing Destiny 2 content. They're just working but, on Destiny 2, yeah. But I think that there's a lot of potential for some great stuff. Um, yeah. Kevin, uh, I saw he brought up a good point in a tweet. Uh, he said that uh, to his understanding, this acquisition was uh, to to see what bun to, to learn what Bungie is doing with games as a service so that PlayStation yeah. can learn from that and and do something like that with their own games because PlayStation doesn't really have a lot of games as a service going on right yeah. now and, and they they, they do have a lot I've to learn from that. Seen somewhere that this is basically Sony's way of trying to get their own version of Fortnite. And like just a game like a never ending game that, that people can just play continuously forever and you know pump money into via you know DLC and hats and uh crap like that. It's never it's a like good the, sign when somebody yeah. says we want to do what Fortnite does. It's never a good sign. Right. <laughs> right. But you know, not to say that they're gonna do Fortnite exactly, but just the idea that Fortnite is this game that everybody can play on every platform. Um, and you know, it just, it's just one of those continuous games that like never ends, you know, Sony doesn't own Fortnite, uh, and they're probably mad at them for making them, you know, do multi-platform, uh, right. multiplayer. Um, but to get a company like Bungie who has been doing a live service game for the past, you know, 10 years at this point to have them come into the fold and like teach them how to do one, I think is, you know, beneficial to them if sony wants to have a slice of that Fortnite pie right uh coronary jump in the chat says hats poggers <laughs> again i'm old so tf2 you bought hats uh khalil jama says lol what do you think nintendo's what what do you think nintendo's thinking seeing everyone getting bought nintendo doesn't care they don't care. Nintendo's was perfectly comfortable. Because, uh, you know, famously, Bungie was originally owned by Microsoft. Then they went independent, and now they're owned by Sony. Part of me was like, well, it's just a matter of time before they go independent again, and then Nintendo buys them. Bungie's had a weird history. Yes. Because <laughs> Bungie has a weird history of, of switching sides in the war. <laughs> yeah. They started as a Mac developer. Yes, and then and nobody knew about them or cared. And then yeah. they unless they, you play games on the Mac, which nobody did, did. Did they get bought by Microsoft before Halo? They they were making Halo, and they presented it at one of the MacWorld developer conferences. Like Steve Jobs said, "This is Halo. You'll be able to play it on the new MacBook, whatever." Mm -hmm. And then after that. Microsoft bought them and made Halo an Xbox exclusive. And then they, you know, gave Microsoft Halo. They gave it to 343 Studios. Yes. Um, and Bungie went on to make uh, Destiny, which was uh, multi-platform. 
Yes. And now <laughs> they're joining PlayStation. Well, I think it's interesting that, you know, they made it clear right in the beginning of the blog post that Bungie will remain independent and a multi-platform studio and publisher. Yeah, that's that's important. I wonder why. Yeah. I, won I wonder if they're doing that because they know people are going to be worried about it, or I wonder if they're doing that because Microsoft has been doing that and they're they're just playing nice. Well, Microsoft has been kind of coy about right. it. Like Microsoft has been honoring like pre-existing contracts and stuff. And like, you know, Call, Call of Duty is going to appear on PlayStation for at least the next three years because that's what the contracts all say. But once they're able to, like with Starfield, if they can make it exclusive to their platform, they will make it exclusive to their platform. Yeah, I think that uh, it seems like they just want to learn from Bungie. Uh, yeah. Maybe they want to use Bungie to develop their games as a service. I don't know. But uh, also, I saw somewhere, and I don't know. I don't know how true this is because I honestly don't think it's going to be. I honestly don't think it's going to be a thing. But add Bungie IPs to their portfolio for the PlayStation Studios overall. Yeah. Because PlayStation Studios is no longer just the games with the Uncharted movie coming out. It's multimedia. So it's possible that we, you know, they could be using like the Destiny IP as the next PlayStation Studios motion picture. Of course, this is all contingent on the fact that the Uncharted movie is going to be a success, which I don't think it will be. <laughs> but yeah, that's I know that PlayStation Studios as a movie studio is something that they've been trying to do for a while now. And Uncharted is the first um, test of that. I don't think that there is a lot of value in Bungie uh, f towards uh, other media. Like like uh, somebody no. in the chat said said uh, they're working on like a Destiny TV show. I don't think there's a lot of value in that for for especially no. for th what was this three point six billion? Yeah, it's the games that 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 they that they're interested yeah. in. Um, would hello is in the chat could it be that if Hi. bungie is all about games as a service sony could stand to make a bigger cut leaving their games on all platforms absolutely yeah uh what was i gonna say um i i, I think that i mean the the biggest like like uh elephant in the room is that microsoft is buying all of these companies <laughs> to put on game pass and playstation yes. needs something like that and they've been they've been trying to build their own game pass competitor behind the scenes and it's no doubt in my mind that uh destiny and and the bungie games uh will be part of that um well as it stands destiny is on game pass it is on yeah. stadia <laughs> Yes. For free. <laughs> like like Destiny is basically everywhere where there's a game where there's a, a, a streaming service. Uh yeah. it's, it's possible that PlayStation could pull it from those services and just leave it on their own when they release it. Um um I sh I guess we should bring up two points here. Uh one I didn't put it in the key but I probably should. Uh Jim Ryan in an in an interview made it very clear that this was not in retaliation of Microsoft buying Activision. Bullshit. This had been this had been in the works for months, trying to acquire Bungie, uh, and I'm assuming that the Activision Microsoft deal has also been in the works for months. So, 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 so I don't think this is retaliation for them buying Activision. This is one thousand percent retaliation for microsoft buying 10 studios a year and a half ago <laughs> remember that they had the e3 where well, they were like yeah, here's but, all but of the studios then, we have now but even then like you would imagine like they would have you know done this sooner it takes a while i know it takes a while and but it's not like microsoft microsoft bought those like 10 studios and then bought a couple more after that <laughs> So like right. I th I think what probably happened was Bethesda happened and then they were like we should probably start moving some funds around. Well, I mean cuz they bought Blue Point Games which had been doing their HD remakes for a while. Mm -hmm. They bought Returnal. Uh, no, they bought 
Housemark, who made Returnal. Um, then they bought uh, Nixie Software, which is a PC port house, and uh, a company called Fire Sprite, uh, made by people who used to work at Sony Interactive Studios Liverpool. But those are much smaller acquisitions right. than what Microsoft has been doing. This is this is nowhere near the level of uh, Microsoft buying uh, Activision or even Microsoft buying Bethesda. This is more along the lines of Activision buying Obsidian. Uh, Sony is buying a long-standing, reputable game developer and bringing it into their ecosystem mm -hmm. while still keeping still keeping them independent of the greater Sony monolith to an extent. Last Colossi in the chat says, what's, what, wait, Sony paid 3.6 billion for Destiny? They know it's free, right? <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody sent me like a, a, a GIF in, in my group chat of like that, basically that conversation. Uh, I'd also like to point out that uh, Bungie was under Activision. <laughs> well, no, they published Destiny through Activision. They right. published Destiny through Activision, and Activision basically said, "You need to make Destiny 2. Yeah. So, so part of what I loved about the original Destiny and the idea of it was that Bungie had plans to make this a forever game. You buy yeah. Destiny, and you and they'll just keep updating it and releasing DLC, and you just keep your character keeps carrying over, and you just keep playing forever, and like like Warcraft, and like World of Warcraft, and it sounded awesome, and I loved that. And then yeah. Activision was like, "Awesome! Everything you have planned for this game, throw it in the fucking trash. You're making us a lot of money. Release Destiny yeah. Two right now." So they released Destiny Two, and I, I part of why I didn't like it was because of of that. And then Bungie hated that they had to do that so much that they bought Destiny back from Activision. Yeah. So uh, they became more independent. So yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I don't know uh, what this means for Destiny. I kind of am excited for a Destiny 3. I want... Uh, or they, they, they shouldn't do that. They should make a new Destiny game, but make that one the forever game. Yeah. Destiny well, Infinite. I, think I don't know. I think Destiny 2 is supposed to be like the forever game. They got to drop the 2. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, if they get rid of the 2, I might play it again. Because <laughs> the 2 is making it like, it makes me feel like they're going to make another one, and then I'll play that yeah. one. Like, I don't want to waste my time playing this one if they're just going to make another one any minute now. True. Um, But not only did they buy Bungie... Jim Ryan has confirmed that Sony plans to make more acquisitions. That makes sense. Not just, yeah. Uh, yeah, Sony announced his intentions to buy Halo and Destiny Creator on Monday and confirmed that the studio will continue to create more multi platform games. This follows this move follows the company's recent acquisitions of Bluepoint, uh, House Mark, blah, blah, blah. Like I said before, uh, PlayStation now has 17 internal developers and Sony Interactive Entertainment president and CEO Jim Ryan suggests there's more to come. We should absolutely expect more, he told GameIndustry.biz. We are by no means done with PlayStation. We have a long ways to go. He added, I will personally be spending a lot of my time with Pete Parsons, Bungie CEO, and the team at Bungie helping them make sure that everything that everything bends down right and that aut autonomy means autonomy. But elsewhere in our organization, we have many more moves to make. Outside of studio acquisitions, Sony has been investing in PS5 exclusives through partnerships with several promising independent studios. Um, Coronary Jump says, any valuable studios left? I saw people on Twitter talking about Konami. Uh, that wouldn't be a company acquisition. That would be an IP acquisition. I don't think anybody wants what Konami has besides their games. Well, <laughs> I mean, that would that would be the equivalent of Activision being bought by Microsoft because it, it's a big company that's having problems and whatnot. And 
I mean, yeah, Microsoft essentially just bought all of, you know, Activision's IPs. It would be the same thing. But then Sony would be in control of those games and not only be able to put them back out there, but also make new versions of those games. You know, we no. will, we would get a new Castlevania. We would get a new Bomberman and whatnot. It's different because Activision is a game company, and Konami was a game company. Was <laughs> and a is game now company, like a yeah. like a gym company and a water company and like a real yeah. estate company, like they and a, and a pachinko company. Most importantly. Yeah, most of what Konami's value is as a company isn't gaming right now. So, uh, yeah, it's they're kind of a worthless company besides the IPs that they have. Uh, so yeah. I don't know exactly what it would be worth or what type of deal they would even want to do to to sell a company. But if anybody's going to buy them, it would yeah. probably be PlayStation. I don't think uh, I don't think Microsoft has has a has leverage there. Yeah. Um. But remember those co cool Konami machines we saw at ScreenWave? Yo, Will, I got to tell you. I went yeah. and visited ScreenWave last Monday. Um, oh, yeah. How was that? They, they in the basement, they had three pachinko machines. Lord knows why. They had... <laughs> okay. the, what were they? They had Silent Hill. Uh, oh. I think it was Castlevania. And they had the Snake Eater one. Oh... Yes. Why are you owing? That's why fucking awesome. <laughs> I have no idea why they got them, <laughs> but that's all fucking we awesome. It was a new, a new good Silent Hill, a new good Metal Gear Solid, and Konami was like, "No, they're pachinko machines." Now. <laughs> you, they basically represent everything Konami now stands for, and everything gamers don't like about Konami. <laughs> Also, Suikoden? Was it Suikoden? I thought it was uh, Silent Hill. Maybe it was Suikoden. I think they own Suikoden, though. There is a there is a Suikoden Pachiko machine. It might have been Suikoden. Me. Anyway. Uh, Konami made NFTs. Oh, great. Fantastic. <laughs> Everybody's awesome, making NFTs, and don't worry, we have a story about that. Yeah, the Wolf Den NFT is coming out at the end yeah, of the show. Yeah. Everybody, get your wallets out. Yeah, we're get making your wallets an NFT. Out and just give us money, and it, and if you buy more than two, I, we will personally come to your house and smack you in the face. <laughs> yeah, you will deserve it. Yes. Uh, that's all we got about Microsoft, right? Uh, you mean Sony? buying Bungie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just that, you know, it's easy yeah. to get them confused when they're both spending yeah. billions of dollars on game well, companies. I, I did find this. I thought this was interesting. Uh, Microsoft's deal to acquire Bungie back in 2000 uh, was valued at between 20 and 40 million dollars. That's it? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. That that that's so. There's two things happening there. One, inflation, mm. completely understandable. Two, the games industry was so undervalued back then. <laughs> yes. And three, I mean, all these companies just make an insane amount more money. They're way bigger now, so it makes it makes sense. Yeah. So where does this put? Uh, let me just see. We had a list of game acquisitions. Yeah, I mean this would put it at like number like seven or something. Yeah. Oh, did I get it right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, baby. Number seven, Sony nice. buying Bungie, right under Byte Dance buying Moonton. Yeah. And Activision buying King. What the hell is Moonton? Uh, it would be. So if Microsoft bought Bungie today with the same price for inflation, it would be about $64.76 million. Okay. It's nothing to snuff at. Nothing to snuff at, but Sony spent much more than that. <laughs> oh, yes. They're worth it. They're, they're worth a lot more now. Yeah. No, them, they definitely are. ByteDance owns Bunch TikTok. I made a TikTok today about yeah. PlayStation panels. Woo! 
Everybody go to the at the wolf den on TikTok and like my video. However, TikTok works. Anyway, BRB my bread bowl is here. Are you the one who said that you've never had Panera before? I think Wood has never had Panera before. Is Panera as common and outside of the uh, outside of like you know New York as it is in New York? That's a good question. I remember seeing a Panera. From, I think it was in Connecticut. Oh, it's not Panera, apparently. Uh, no, there, no, I, it is. I, 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 I they're they're all over uh, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, Florida. Okay. I've I see them a lot. I mean, they're everywhere in New York. I can't remember if it was Connecticut or Rhode Island or whatever, but it was one of those states. <laughs> and the Panera closed at 6 and was not open on the weekend. <laughs> that is dumb. Yeah. Some bullshit places in America close early. Like 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 the whole town either closes at like 6 o'clock or they're just closed on yeah. Sundays completely. Like, go to church. We don't want to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Underscore says they are everywhere and always disappointing. You know, he's just not getting the right things. Bob, do you get your bagels from Panera? Fuck no. <laughs> no, we live in New York. We get our bagels from bagel places. Yes, bagel places. That's the name of the store. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to thanking subscribers like Evan626. Thanks for the seven months. And Spankwise, thanks for gifting a sub to K Jack. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about Nintendo ruining the lives of gaming YouTubers. Nintendo has a reputation for having zero tolerance policy over apparent copyright infringement. As content creators will know, using game footage, music, or any other copyrighted material can land you in hot water with its legal department, even if your work is clearly fair use. However, even with that in mind, today's news still manages to be shocking. YouTuber Gilva Sunner has been hit with a staggering 1,300 takedown notices from the company, probably a record if anyone's keeping track. The takedowns are all music tracks from various games, and this comes despite the videos not being monetized and Nintendo offering no official way to listen to those tracks. As spotted by My Nintendo News, Gilva Sunner is no stranger to Nintendo's copyright strikes. They first shared dozens of emails concerning the takedowns in 2019 and have since uh, have since added to the thread whenever they're targeted by the legal team. The most recent wave targets the full soundtracks to 17 games, totaling 1,300 claims. The titles include, included in the takedown are Super Smash Bros., um, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, Mario Galaxy, Luigi's Mansion, and many more. Again, this is with Nintendo offering no alternative. As a response to the to the tweet highlights, the only other way for fans to listen to a Nintendo game soundtrack would be to boot up Smash Brothers and use its musical collection there. Of course, this isn't the most practical solution to be offered. I believe this is the guy who uh, had a he had an upload of the Mario Sunshine song, like the Delfino Plaza song, that yeah. just never started. <laughs> you know how it starts dun 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 Oh, it just kept and doing just, that. And you think it's gonna yeah, and it just never starts. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh unfortunately that's probably not on his channel anymore. Yeah. Along with all these other games that Nintendo has you know blocked. Uh I'd like to point us to this tweet that I'm not gonna play because it has a copyrighted uh uh song in it. It's got a Beatles song. <laughs> but uh it's a quote tweet of Gilva Sunner, who says that he got 1,300 copyright claims. Uh, and it's a video of Nintendo UK saying, what's your favorite piece of music from the Legend of Zelda series? Stop it. And all of the replies were taken down off of YouTube. <laughs> so everyone who replied with a song, the song got deleted. Maybe this was Nintendo trying to catch people who uploaded tracks. This is just a way to collect Maybe. them all. Yeah. So yeah, as a fun, fun little goof and a gaff. It's a fun time being uh, uh doing Nintendo content on YouTube. 
it's always been fun doing Nintendo content on YouTube. You never know when they could just come in and say, hey, stop it. Give me your money. Give me your yeah. source of in. Thanks for promoting our game. <laughs> Give me all of your money. You can't make it anymore. Only we can make it. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's been a little bit of controversy uh, over... Uh, what the hell's the company? Uh, Toei Animation. Um, there's a oh yes. So anime is usually really litigious. Anime companies are super litigious, and 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 they do copyright cl claims more than Nintendo. Uh, there's an anime YouTuber who got like all of like almost all of his videos uh, claimed by Toei Animation. Uh, a lot of them don't even uh, have any Toei stuff in it. Um, but uh it was it was a it was a huge problem and and it's kind of you know it's kind of youtube's fault for having their system built this way but he re finally released like a little update the guy and he said youtube actually really helped him out youtube uh a high up at youtube contacted him directly and told him about all the meetings they had with toe animation and uh what they were trying to do to 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 work things out uh it just kind of like the system is broken and kind of sucks, but uh, yeah, I mean, you have to understand that there are a lot of people who are just uploading anime episodes to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> that like that's a thing that happens more than we think. So there does need to be a system in place to cut those out. But unfortunately, that system hurts people also like us. Cuts out people, yeah. Um, in the toy animation case, it. Japanese law was so bad that uh, it could be argued that he was committing copyright infringement, but that's only under Japanese law. And the and that the fact that his videos are targeted towards the West or or American audiences, um, yeah. he uh, he they they decided uh, they would keep all YouTube decided we're gonna keep all of your videos up everywhere but Japan, and they made like a little exception for him. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Nintendo. Uh, just if, if you're if you're making content online, don't use Nintendo songs. Just, just don't make, do Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't. So like, I always say that like video game music is relatively safe because, uh, I mean, we play video games. So like, yeah. uh, if you're gonna play a video game in a video, I mean, the music's gonna be there. Yeah. But uh, Nintendo's a little more dicey. Also, I suggest if you're making a video on a Nintendo game at all, uh, or or anything really, uh, if you're using like a trailer, cut that shit up. Like, cut it up a lot. Don't yeah. leave it playing for too long uncut. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that we ha as creators have to do to kind of skirt around that stuff. We've been yeah. pretty lucky on the main channel to not have to worry about stuff like that. Even on the Clips channel, I never get copyright strikes, but on the... Whenever I did, uh, when I used to upload straight up VODs from live streams, almost everyone got claimed. It was terrible. Um, anyway, uh, Spoopy Girl, thanks for the 11 months. Woot, Wolf Den, Bros, Rock. Thank you so much. Here's a weird one. MLB The Show, which is a PlayStation exclusive title. No more. <laughs> MLB The Show made its debut on Xbox last year, and it is now making its way to the Nintendo Switch. MLB The Show 22 will be released on April 5th on PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and Series X and S. This is the first entry in the MLB The Show series for Nintendo's console, and it will include full cross-platform progression, cross-saves, and online multiplayer between PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch consoles. The cover athlete this year is Shohei Otani, who had an incredible 2021, hitting uh, 46 home runs and over 100 runs batted in. The Japanese baseball star is the only obvious choice to grace the cover of MLB The Show 22, uh, says Ramon Russell, a uh, brand strategist at Sony San Diego Studio on the PlayStation blog. Switch owners will be pleased to hear that MLB The Show is making its way to the Switch, especially after seeing it arrive on Xbox last year and previously needing to play the game on PlayStation for years. This is a very exciting moment for all of us and as the storied franchise continues to welcome more players. 
Standard editions of the game will be priced at $59.99 on Xbox One, Switch, and PS4. The same standard edition will be priced at six at $69.99 on PS5 and Series X and S. Uh, if you purchase the PS4 edition and plan on upgrading to a PS5, you will need to purchase the digital edition to take advantage of the $10 upgrade offer. So this is a big deal because this game has historically been a PlayStation exclusive. Um, yeah. Last year it was on Xbox? Last year it was on Xbox. And not only that, it was on Game Pass Day 1. And Crazy. it looks like this will also this game will also be available on day, Game Pass Day I 1. I think the story from that when it moved to Xbox or when it, you know, launched on Xbox, I think the story from that was that MLB like forced PlayStation to do that. <laughs> yeah, cuz for the longest time there was no multi-platform major league baseball game right it was just mlb the show and i think after a while major league baseball like stepped in and said this should really be more places than just playstation so i think madden's on everything um nba 2k is on everything nhl is on everything fifa's on everything why isn't major league baseball on everything i think that playstation had uh there was potential that PlayStation might have lost the license if they didn't move it to other consoles. Yeah. So uh, I think PlayStation is learning from other companies like Microsoft who yeah. are cool with multi-platform stuff because they know they're still going to make their money. Like yeah. the console sales isn't everything. The game sales matters a lot too. Yeah, because historically they take a loss on consoles uh, that are sold because they hope to make it back in games and services. Right, so if they own a bunch of studios or a bunch of yeah. game IPs that are releasing for other consoles, they're still making money. But at the same time, they're still not as like embracing of it as like Microsoft is, and is in the right. sense that Microsoft is still doing um, PC and console launch simultaneously. Like Halo Infinite came out on both Xbox and PC on the same day. Same thing with uh, uh, Psychonauts Two and uh, Sea of Thieves and, you know, a bunch of other first-party Microsoft Studios, studio games. Um, Sony has started releasing games on PC, but years after their initial release. Right. So Horizon uh, Horizon Forbidden West is coming soon. Uh, PC players just got Horizon Zero Dawn. God of War just came out, even though Ragnarok is supposed to come out this year. So there's, like, they're dipping their toes in, but they're not, like fully embracing this trend that's happening this more open multi-platform it's trends. they're going to be a lot slower to to be accepting of this yeah uh but i think that it, they're making good progress so far yeah um anyway uh we got a new game announcement boys yes congratulations everybody yacht yes. club yacht club, yacht club. mina the hot you know, the Howler is a Zelda-like new game from Shovel Knight developers. Shovel Knight developer Yacht Club Games has announced that Mina the Howler as a gothic action-adventure game and Game Boy Color love letter that channels the likes of Legend of Zelda, Castlevania, and Bloodborne. It shared, it shared the news as its major announcement during the Yacht Club Games Presents at G4. Meanwhile, a Kickstarter page for Mina the Howler is now live with a goal of uh, $311,503. Games have already pledged $100,000, so don't expect it to take long to reach that initial goal. Whereas Shovel Knight was a love letter to the NES era of gaming, Mina the Howler takes on a Game Boy aesthetic, including taking on a widescreen version of the standard Game Boy resolution. Uh, from the announcement That's trailer, awesome. it's easy to see... <laughs> From the announcement trailer, it's easy to see that Yacht Club has been busy filling the game with loads of callbacks and references, but it includes fresh elements like a leveling system that sees players collecting bones to upgrade different skills and stats. The eponymous mouse of Mina the Howler will utilize different spooky items and companions and companions through her journey. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, Yacht Club hasn't made a new ip ever 
<laughs> Sho- they, they've Shuff- done Shovel Knight and like various Shovel Knight related spinoffs. Right. So Shovel Knight has been their only developed IP since 2014. Mm-hmm. And they've released a bunch of Shovel Knight spinoffs. Uh, and they've also published games from other... They published the Striker Pack, Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack. I did not know yes. that. Oh, for the and, 3DS um, specifically. Um, Cyber Shadow. They published famously. That's it, yeah. Cyber Shadow last year. Did you see? Did you see, Will? I saw. We got a box quote, baby. I saw. Let me let me pull that up. We got, we're, uh, well, friggin', uh, they, so they had a little uh, uh, announcement they announced this game on G4 today, and they had a little accolades trailer for the year uh, launch of Cyber Shadow, because that happened a year ago. One of my favorite. I, it might have been my favorite game of last year. Uh, by the end, you feel like a god, Wolfden. We made it. We made it to the trailer, guys. We did it. I mean, that's not all the Wolfden said about it, but... <laughs> Will never got to the end. He couldn't feel like a god. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. After seeing this, uh, Mina the Howler, I feel like somebody played uh, uh, what's that game? Uh, the freaking PSVR game with with the with the rodent. Oh, Moss. Moss. Somebody played Moss and was yeah. like, "We can do this on the Game Boy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they said it was a widescreen Game Boy uh, resolution. Uh, it's probably what the art is sized at, but. That's not the resolution of the game. It looks like it looks like it's. Uh, well, no, I think they meant like Game Boy aesthetic, but like because right. the Game Boy had fame, like had a square screen, so they tried to find a way to right. fit it to a wide screen. But you look at games like w- what I always like to point out is uh, Chasm. Mm-hmm. That game was rendered at like a super nin- like a widescreen Super Nintendo aspect ratio and upscaled so that all of the pixels move the way you imagine seeing it if it was upscaled correctly uh this it right. looks like the characters like the pixels you know they're not like hard on a hard grid it looks like maybe i'm wrong i mean it uh, certainly does look like a game boy color game like much more so than a lot of other games that try i to, mean like, they ape that aesthetic they nailed the palette it's beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful game still. Uh, messenger music sounds like it would be on Genesis. See, the messenger. Well, the messenger transcends uh, console generations. <laughs> like <Yeah>. mid game. <laughs> yeah. They challenge someone to port it to Game Boy when it's done, but it's all designed in widescreen, so it would require a mod or a rewrite. It's probably not going to fit on a Game Boy cartridge either. But they're freaking probably not. Tiny, so not a lot of memory on that on that thing. Uh, I love the Game Boy aesthetic. Obviously, I've been. I really yeah. want to. I don't have. I haven't had a lot of time, but I really want to mess around with a GB Studio. Um, I think there could be some fun stuff going on in there. Yeah, use one of those SD card Game Boy carts. It's still. You would have to like stream the game. It's. It's gonna be. It's not gonna be. Yeah, easy. Yeah, it's not gonna be as easy as people think it'll be. I bet people will. I bet there will be people who do oh, it. Oh, yeah, but, no, uh, definitely. It's not going to be a one-to-one. They straight up looked at Link's Awakening and went, we can do this better. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I wanted, I I want more platformers out of out of Yacht Club. I loved Cyber Shadow. I loved Shovel Knight. Uh, this looks really good. I would have liked a platformer, but I think I'll like this anyway. Uh, yeah, I did like. Oh, it is platforming! I just saw platforming happen. <laughs> I'm in. Give, I'll give you all my money. There you go. Uh, I liked Link's Awakening. I think I think I'll I'll have a good time with this. We'll see. We'll see when it comes out. When is it coming out? Uh, as soon as it reaches its Kickstarter goal. Oh yeah, true. It's a Kickstarter. Not as soon, but like let let them let them hit their Kickstarter goal. I read that they uh that the Kickstarter is $1 more than what they raise. Their asking price is $1 more than what they made for Shovel Knight, I think. Huh. Um, that would that would make sense. That's why it's such a weird number. Yeah, their, their, their goal is $311,503. And uh, they're yeah. almost there. 
They're like they're like a third. They're like two thirds of the way there. Yeah, they're two thirds of the way there. Good on them. And it, they just announced it a few hours ago. So yeah. I think at the time, Shovel Knight was like the bet, like the biggest Kickstarter. Or it was, it was the biggest like, video game Kickstarter. Definitely. Uh, and that was immediately eclipsed. <laughs> like the, people just yeah kept releasing games over and over again on Kickstarter. Oh, well, and uh, the sad thing is, it was immediately eclipsed by games that were nowhere near as good as Shovel Knight. Yeah, Shovel Knight. You know, like had some Mighty legs. Number nine. Uh, yeah, Mighty Number no. Nine. I think it's um, it's interesting that they went with a Kickstarter, especially one for this cheap. Three hundred eleven thousand dollars is very cheap for a for a video game right well, now. Well, I think they probably because their first game was Kickstarter, and they're probably mm. not making. You know, they probably want. They're probably using Kickstarter as a way to test the market, mm-hmm. test the waters. If this is not something that people want, maybe they'll like re- rethink it, cancel it, start over again. But this is this is probably more of a marketing tool than it is. Uh, we need money to make a game tool. Absolutely, yeah. They did not have to make a Kickstarter yeah. at all. They could have just said, "We're making a yeah. new game." They have plenty of money in the bank to 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 do that. This three hundred and eleven thousand dollars, I feel like, is not going to do much for them. <laughs> yeah, but it, it uh, is going to get a lot of people interested. Yeah. Uh, the twenty dollar pledge is the lowest pledge if you want the game. So you need to uh, you need to pledge a minimum of twenty dollars to get the game. Estimated delivery on, December twenty twenty three. It's gonna be a long time till we see this. Yeah. And it, it's looking it's looking like they're well into development. It looks pretty damn good yeah. right now. I don't know. Ooh, $100 gets you the physical version of the game. That'll be interesting. That's cool. How much? $100? 100 100 That's a lot for a physical version. You better come with a I bunch mean, of stuff. I mean, you, yeah, you get a, uh, early access to the soundtrack, uh, access to backer-exclusive music live streams, a digital art book, and full access to Yacht Club game design sh- uh, live streams. If you want the physical art book, that's two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Damn, I do kind of want it, but not for that much. That's too much. If you want your name in the game, it's two hundred dollars. I want my name in the game. Well, um, well, I mean, just, just say something nice about it, and you'll you'll get your name <laughs> in the trailers. That couldn't. Um. I'm curious how it's rendered. Now I'm I'm starting to doubt myself about the I'm gonna have to like slow down the the video and like see where the pixels line up and stuff. Yeah. A friend of mine backed the $250 tier for the plush. Is the friend named Kevin Kenson? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, it comes with a plush? Oh, oh for $25 more, you get the plush. For two hundred for the two hundred fifty dollar tier, for five hundred dollars you get a da- game design document book. <laughs> All right, okay, let's not let's not keep going here. Uh, they have a section called Why Kickstarter. All right, let's go to that. Yo, some of the some of the tiers are already gone. Like there was a seven hundred fifty dollar tier, uh, where you can be an NPC director for a day. A thousand dollar tier where you can be an assistant director. Three somebody pledged three thousand dollars to be the game's director for a day. How does that work? I don't know. Oh, Imagine no, I'm delete sorry. everything. I'm sorry. There were three spots for that. <laughs> so three people spent three thousand dollars to be a director in this game. That's gonna be that would that sounds like a horrible day for the developers. We got yeah. a new guy coming in for a day. He's gonna ruin everything. Here he is. Here's Joe. You you, you know what you should do with this level? Make it all boobs. <laughs> People <laughs> love boobs. Boobs. Put boobs wall to wall boobs, screen to screen boobs. How many boobs can you fit on this pixel count? Uh, here's a section. Why Kickstarter? Compared to our original Kickstarter, we're not in d- dire straits. We're fi- 
we're financing a majority of Mina the Howler's development internally. Our main reason for launching a Kickstarter this time is to build a brand new universe in the same way we did with our first game, Shovel Knight, with our community involved in creating something special along with us. Every backer that joins the development will help to make a more robust game. Together, we'll break new ground. Okay, so they're using a Kickstarter as a means to put community members in the game and to make community members feel like they're a part of the development. It's pretty there cool. So they're basically doing everything themselves. That's why the game looks like it's fleshed out. Um, yeah. They're just using this as a way to get uh, the community members involved, which is a pretty cool idea. All right. That's it for uh, Mina the Howler. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, good stuff. I want to briefly talk about Pokemon Legends Arceus. Arceus. Ar I was going to ask, did we confirm if it's Arceus or Arceus? We confirmed that in Japanese, it's Aru Seyasu. Seyusu. Okay. Seyasu. Uh... But there's like uh, in the trailer in English they call it Arceus, right? So you say it however you want to say it, boys. Yeah. Um, it has an 84 on Metacritic. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if that's where I I I think I could have guessed it would be around there. Uh, I played it. I'm only about six ish hours in. Why did my mouse stop working? Uh. I don't know. I So I still feel like I barely scratched the surface of the game, even though the game is only like 23 hours long. I do want to play more. I feel like I'm at a good point in the game where I want to, where I actually want to play. Unfortunately, okay. the first three hours of the game is a tutorial. And if you've played a Pokemon game before, it fucking sucks having to deal with all that shit again. Oh, no. Yeah. Fortunately... This game feels like everything a, a home console Pokemon game should have been on the okay. Wii. <laughs> uh. Like, this is what they should have been doing then. They're a little behind, oh but it's still pretty good. Yeah. I feel like the more that I get into now, the more I'm going to like it. It's a rough go at first, though, I have to say. Unless okay. you just mash through all the tutorial, maybe you'll have a fine time. I watched somebody mashed through the tutorial and then he didn't know what to do at a certain point and he was just told like oh you're gonna battle now and you have to, you can like move around while you're battling and then he did it and everything was fine he figured it out like i think that this game has a lot of the same flaws that a lot of pokemon games have they're not right. very uh user friendly um there's a lot of dumb things in it that don't have to be in it or could be like explained that could just be like rubbed away or like like a like a little footnote um or like needlessly complicated um right fortunately i mean i don't know i don't know if this is fortunate or unfortunate the game front loads all of that needless bullshit in the first three okay. hours um I mean, after that's kind of good uh so I thought the tutorial was an hour long. I mean, the official tutorial is an hour long, but they keep just giving you bullshit for another hour right. or two after that. That It doesn't really stop until you fight the first, like, big gold Pokemon guy. And then the game kind of opens up and lets you do whatever you want. Yeah. Um. But after you get to that point, it feels like this is what Pokemon games should, should be from now on. This is how it... it like the mechanics are good like there and good after a little bit right um but again it feels like this is how pokemon games should have been when when consoles were an option so so um, then because the mainline pokemon games have more or less been the same game for the past 25 years or whatnot right do you think they will add elements from this into the mainline game or or do you think they'll tr try to keep them separate because to me i mean i haven't played it maybe you can you know uh answer this this game looks like it's too different from a mainline pokemon game and if so, they do start making the mainline games like this it could alienate 
the fan base that they've been targeting for the past 25 years. So it's so it's pitched as a completely different style of Pokemon game. Right. But when you play it, it feels exactly like a Pokemon game. <laughs> so okay. like so like the the whole thing that makes it cool and mysterious and new is that you are fighting the Pokemon, right? Right. That's what it looks like. Like in the trailers you're like dodge rolling away from Pokemon that are attacking you and stuff. In reality, you throw a Pokeball and your Pokemon comes out. You have six Pokemon right. in your team. You fight them just like you do in a regular Pokemon game. The only difference is you can move around while the Pokemon are fighting. So, okay. and there's there's not really a lot of trainer battles, but there are trainer battles. So like, um, this could very easily just be how Pokemon games are. From They could easily take elements from this and just put them in regular Pokemon games. And I really hope that they do because it made it made the experience a lot better. Right. Especially after coming out of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, I thought that the Pokemon battles in that game were so fucking boring and stupid. Being yeah. in the battle yourself feels awesome. Like, I think that it's it's really cool in that way but uh yeah otherwise uh there's some other weird stuff that that doesn't make much sense like um the game just kind of opens up and is like do whatever you want at a certain point which is like pretty cool <laughs> but at the same time it's like uh you have like this like list this like long list of things that you need to do like these research tasks right. and uh the ui is so bad that like it's not immediately noticeable which ones are important or to do or whatever the checklist doesn't make any sense the check the check marks are on the right and the little box that you think is a check mark has like arrows on it that don't make any sense i don't know but right. really all you have to do is just play the game and then you'll check off research tasks um it feels like a beta like it looks like a breath of the wild pokemon game but it is not anywhere close to as big as Breath of the Wild. It would be nice Got if it. they had some more, like, uh, 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 if, if it was more freeing and, like, a, a better user experience. Like, for example, Breath of the Wild has, like, a little bit of a tutorial, and it just kind of pushes you through the rest. You know, it's like, here, you, yeah. you're smart enough. You can figure it out. Pokemon could really benefit from that. But uh, uh, I think that there's a lot of great ideas in here. Uh, I just, I, I'm very doubtful that the Pokemon company uh, is going to make huge leaps with the next Pokemon game. I think that they'll just maybe take an idea here or there. Uh, but I'm it glad that they're experimenting. Yeah, it is interesting that this game is also being developed by Game Freak, who have done all the Pokemon games up to this mm -hmm. point. Do you think this is basically like Game Freak saying like, listen, can we just do one thing that's a little different? You know, we've been making the same game for 25 years. So we just do one thing that's a little different. It feels to me like they know that fans want something different and they reluctantly did something different. That's what it feels like to right. me. It feels like we're going to do something different, but our way. Yeah. That's what it feels like. And it's good and it feels good and I like where I'm at. I need to play more of it before I can give a definitive opinion, though. And I said that. I, I keep saying that I'm six hours into the fucking game like I should yeah. be able to tell whether or not I like it or not so I don't know honestly though that's kind of how I felt with Monster Hunter I played a lot of Monster Hunter and I still had no idea what I felt about it <laughs> so I don't know I need to play a little more but uh, people are enjoying it if you are interested in Pokemon but want something a little different this this is good if you have three hours to sit through the bullshit you have to get through that before you get to the good stuff. Right. Anyway, that's my rant about Pokemon Legends. Arceus, Arceus, Ar Arceus. Let's plow through some more news. Like, for example, Ubisoft and NFTs. Yeah. Uh, last year, Ubisoft announced its first foray into NFTs, Ubisoft Quartz. Uh, people didn't like it. Uh, where is it? The whole thing was led by Nicholas Proud, uh, VP of Ubisoft Statistics Innovations Lab. Proud has now commented on the backlash to Quartz, finding, uh, telling Finder that I think gamers don't get what a digital secondary market can bring to them. For now, because of the current situation and context of NFTs, gamers really believe it's first destroying the planet and second, just a tool for speculation. 
But what we are seeing first is the end game. The end game is about giving players the opportunity to resell their items once they've finished with them or they're finished playing the game itself. So it's really for them. It's really <laughs> beneficial. But they don't but they don't get it for now. Also, this is part of a paradigm shift in gaming. Moving from one economic system to another is not easy to handle. There are a lot of habits you need to go against and a lot of your ingrained mindset you have to shift. It takes time. We know that. Uh, even if we give Proud the benefit of the doubt and try to understand the Ubisoft pitch, the problem remains that there are just doesn't seem to be much there, much here to grasp. One of Proud's key arguments is that is about decentralization and how it could potentially change what a game is. I'm sorry, as I, I know it's difficult to understand right now, as this is kind of an idea that doesn't really exist yet, but we see that the ec ecosystem for a game can be much, much bigger than what a game is today in terms of value creation for everyone. This is, of course, uh, this, of course, is leading to the concept of play to earn, something that many feel well, an instinctive revulsion towards. Games are surely about having fun and being entertained and an escape from the actual world of having to make rent and have a job. <laughs> uh, there's the fun, of course, says Proud. Uh, the pleasure you take by just playing. There is the fact that you can learn things. For instance, in Assassin's Creed, you can learn about history, and we work on experience on experiments in old games when you could learn new soft skills. So a game can be a lot of things and can bring a lot of things to players. Adding a real-world value reward might be the next addition on top of all the value a game already offers. I I. Uh, we 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 don't have to we don't have to the keep whole going, fucking yeah. article. It's stupid anyway. The point is, <laughs> the point is, we, NFTs are not the problem. We're the problem. Yes, the whole time it was us. Uh, so here's something that I don't understand about NFTs. What I think, to to my understanding of NFTs, uh, in order to put something onto the blockchain, you need uh ethereum or 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 a cryptocurrency to, to yes attach it to yes yeah so how the fuck is that gonna like if if i get a helmet in a game like i'm not gonna get that helmet i have to purchase that helmet you have to purchase the helmet you need to have like crypto in order to do it um and it's i think you need to uh, it's it's gonna be tied to you regardless even if you mm. sell even if you do theoretically sell it it like there's it the system's still gonna know that you owned it at one point. So 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 this so this is just microtransactions times ten. <laughs> yeah, this is microtransactions <laughs> the next generation. Like 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 in the past, microtransactions we've been able to like explain away microtransactions or like be be okay with microtransactions if some of them are uh if you can uh, acquire them in the game through gameplay. If you can acquire them in the game and if if the ability to acquire them in the game is not, you know, ex you know, unnecessarily difficult, mm -hmm. or if the payment for it is reasonable, yeah. You so, know, like, so, so, like, you need to you need to spend a hundred hours in Battlefront in order to play as Darth Vader is not reasonable, right? And, and in this case, you physically can't get one of these in-game items because it needs to be tied to real cryptocurrency or money i i mean correct uh there needs somebody needs to back it in some way yeah. and I, I doubt ubisoft's gonna bankroll all of these nfts to like give to people you know like you're gonna yeah. have to pay for it, it um, it's really it's really more of a way for like them to generate money off of you right you yes, know exactly and that, that's all it is there there is no benefit for you as a gamer to owning an nft the, it, it's in, really the, in the warped minds created... in the warped minds of these crypto bros you yes. generate profits when you have the nft because if it's sold and keeps getting sold you keep making money but that right. is exactly what a pyramid scheme is yes <laughs> that's it's like you're doing multi-level marketing it's the same fucking thing yeah yeah so, 
it's not that we don't understand. We understand we don't want it in our games the, the, or the, in the, anything. There are people who are going to benefit greatly from something like this, but they're going to be few and far between, and it's not going to be worth it for the vast majority of people. It's going to fuck mm -hmm. over a lot of people. So uh, it's very dumb. Also, yeah. what they seem to be leaving out of this is that they could just do all this without NFTs. They could just fucking yes. do it. Just do it. Just let us trade in-game items and sell them and stuff without the NFT part. Yeah. You already have that in other games. You don't got to do all this. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> We've done it before. We've had hats. Give us the hats the way that we've had the hats. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I highly recommend, if anybody uh, wants to know more about why this is a scam, uh, Dan Olson of the channel Folding Ideas did a two-hour video breaking down the problem with NFTs. And if you have the time, I highly recommend you watch it because it mm -hmm. is the most informative and the most depressing look at NFTs you will find. Now, I don't have any extensive knowledge in crypto or NFTs or any of that. So, so right. uh, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. But my understanding of crypto, I have very little money in, in crypto. But my understanding of crypto is that uh, it seems impossible for there to be a new cryptocurrency that isn't a pyramid scheme. I feel like all of the new cryptos that have come out in the past couple of years are just dudes trying to make money off of other dudes. Yeah. The only ones that I think have any value are the ones that came out when Bitcoin happened and everything immediately after that, that tried to like do Bitcoin, but better. And then everything after that is just people trying to pump and dump. Well, um, yeah, like everybody who like, made money off of it were people who got in on the ground floor. Now they're just trying to sucker you right. into getting in too late. There's yeah. no way for you to make money on Bitcoin or NFTs right now because everybody who did is or is already there. Yeah. And, and it's and it, even even the old stuff like Bitcoin and, and Ethereum and and stuff like that, uh it's all it's all so variable as you, it's not anybody who says you're gonna make any money doesn't is is only out for themselves they, they don't give a shit about you yeah. um i mean it's possible you can make money but uh it's pot it's also possible you can lose all of your money so uh it's yeah. gambling you're gambling with all this stuff yeah if that's what it is it's it's gambling uh i'm gonna save that video that you just put in the chat for later yeah. again it, it's two hours but Holy it is shit. yeah but I don't think I've ever seen a, anyone explain this, the whole NFT and Bitcoin situation mm -hmm. better than this. All right, let's plot through some more. Horizon Forbidden West reuses animation. This is a big controversy. So, yeah. So just to sum it up, uh, somebody on Twitter got really mad because IGN showed a gameplay comparisons of Horizon, the new Horizon game, Horizon Forbidden West, and the previous game, Horizon Zero Dawn, and somebody noticed that. Um, Forbidden West is reusing animation from Zero Dawn. Like, in particular, when Aloy jumps and swings, it's the same animation from the first game. And people are mad, and they are calling uh, Guerrilla Games, the developer, lazy and uncreative because they're just reusing assets. Why are they spending so much time making a new game if they're just reusing assets? I think it kind of looks better uh, in, in the first game. <laughs> What this fails to take into account is that this is nothing new. Game developers do this all the time because game development is hard and exhausting and it sucks. And if they could, you know, alleviate the stress of making a game, they will do it. Every sequel to every game you've ever played reuses animation. That's not a secret. That's not anything new. I have to I have to stop you for a second. This just in breaking news. Uh, we got a copyright claim on the Already? podcast <laughs> channel um, on YouTube. Uh, okay. Oh, it's from an old uh, live stream where I played uh, DMCA Royale, which is Mario Royale. <laughs> uh, the oh, oh it's, it's no. for music. It's for music. 
claimed by Believe Music. Copyrighted oh, content, sorry. views. Yeah, sounds legit, dude. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Um, anyway. So one time I visited Titmouse. Uh, for, hey. I, I I did a like a like a college course after college, and I uh, the, the we visited the animation studio Titmouse, uh, which does yeah. Uh, 2d animation uh they do a lot of adult swim stuff and some other stuff and uh they yeah. were working on uh uh the um what's what was the snails who were race cars what was that oh turbo they were making a turbo show for i think disney or something okay. um and the guy who was working on it was like check this out guys um here is a uh, uh, here is a, a an animation of Turbo uh, saying something like excitedly, and I took that and I pasted it into this scene where he's saying "yay" and it's the same fucking thing. Sometimes you just got to make your life a lot easier. So yeah, uh, yes, they're always going to copy and paste stuff. Uh, a lot of. Uh, what you see is rehashed and you have no idea that it's like that. In the te- in terms of video games, when they make a sequel, they already have a baseline. So yeah, ho- the hope is that they can reuse a lot of stuff to make the game exponentially better. They can just build off of yeah. what they already have and spend a lot of time making it that much better. Unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't work that way with, for example, something like Call of Duty. It's usually just the same fucking thing every time. But right. with a game like Horizon, there's so much time between development. Hopefully, this game can be way better than the first one because they have yeah. that baseline to work off of. Yeah. You know, and, and you look at, you know, you, like, you look at Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed 2. Those games reuse animation all the time. But Assassin's Creed 2 is a much better game than Assassin's Creed 1 was. Because they right. took what they made in the first game and they developed on it and extrapolated on it and made it something much more fun to play. Even if they had to reuse the jump animation and the landing animation and the stabbing animation and all of that. Uh, Metasense says, you know how many times Disney has rotoscoped the same reference video for their animated movies? Yeah, I forgot about it. Yeah. That's what I was trying Everybody, to Everybody's get seen at. that. And people say like that's a, sh- a sign of Disney's laziness. It's not. If anything, it's a sign of their efficiency. Because they they were able to make one template that is applicable to everything. And it's much harder than people think to, especially in hand-drawn animation, to reuse you know, the same movement for different films. People think it's laziness to use reference uh, and, and, and yeah, to reuse stuff. Um, yeah. One thing that really pissed me off. So I, when I, used to, I used to want to be an illustrator and I used to use reference drawings all the time because my drawings were just not referenced. I used to use reference photographs and like life material to draw stuff because uh, I wouldn't trace it, but I would you know, use it because it just, it looked that much better. Um, and some people were completely against that. Most of the people who were against that were not artists. <laughs> but one time I saw Greg Capullo say that uh, reference is for bitches and he does everything from his mind. Then... A few years later, he posted on Twitter all of his reference material that Marvel gave him. For because I guess back in the day, you know, you couldn't just Google image search something that you wanted. Yeah. Like if you wanted a gun, you couldn't Google image search, you know, M4A1. You had to yeah find it in a library or something. So Mar- uh, Marvel had a book of reference material. So fucking he used reference material. Everybody used reference material. Neil Adams yeah. talks Neil about Neil Adams. Yeah, yeah, he was on Kevin Smith's podcast and he said, everyone will tell you, oh, you don't trace. Never trace. Everyone fucking traces. <laughs> they trace all the time. It's what we do. Yeah, and he showed like some of his famous uh, Batman yeah. covers were, were, were yeah. <laughs> just straight up traced from stuff. Yeah. And you can see it. You Neil can Adams- see a, a lot of famous comic book uh, uh, like images. Uh, people find the reference material. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Neil Adams also thinks the center of the earth is hollow, but that's a different story. That's a different uh, story. We don't got to talk about that. Instead, we could talk about Star Wars 1313 footage. I always love seeing new stuff from this game because I am so upset yes. that this game didn't uh, happen. So basically, after, you know, everybody, everyone's currently watching the book of Boba Fett and thinks it's fine, 
Uh, and in celebration of that, uh, a developer who worked on 1313 showed off some uh, unreleased footage of the game. Uh, and it really does look like Star Wars Uncharted, but it looks so cool. <laughs> we might get uh, taken down for this, but I'm playing it anyway. I want to see this. Do it. Yeah. So this was like the gritty rated M Star Wars game before the Disney yeah. acquisition. And then that happened and yeah. it got canned. Um, there's some concept art for this game in one of the art books that I have that like uh, isn't really published anywhere else. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, like we have it. Oh, once it got canned, we learned it was about it was a Boba Fett game. We didn't know it was yeah. before that. Um and, you know, back in the day, we didn't get much Boba Fett material. So this is a pretty big yeah. fucking deal. So, and yeah, as you can see, it had like a lot of, I don't want to say Uncharted specific, but like that's clearly the inspiration, like getting down a slope and, you know, high octane running platforming stuff. Um, previous stuff that we had seen, which would show like very cinematic, like escape scenarios where like you're climbing on the side of a falling starship and whatnot. Uh, cover shooting reminiscent of games of the time. Yeah, this was uh, uh, look gritty Star Wars. I wanted that. I, yeah. and, and at the time, is, again, know, we didn't yeah, we didn't get that shit. Yeah. I mean, we didn't now even have we're Rogue getting One. It. <laughs> no, but like now we we have Rogue One of uh, and we have The Mandalorian and we're getting uh the Cassian Andor spin-off coming to Disney Plus and now I'm sure that's going to, you know, be as gritty as Rogue One was. Um, I just I want so yeah. I want a lot more Star Wars that doesn't have lightsabers or Jedi's. Like I want I want like the gritty regular people of Star Wars, the universe, yeah. you know? Yeah. I want I want more Star Wars that doesn't always have to circle back to the stuff from the original trilogy. Right. And like re constantly reference the original trilogy. Um, I feel like that's been a problem. It's definitely a problem with the J.J. Abrams films. Uh, and that was a big problem. For, and I like The Mandalorian Season 2 a lot, but that was a big sticking point for me in The Mandalorian Season 2 was it just kept doing that a mm -hmm. lot. So any Star Wars that can just be something new that isn't connected. I mean, obviously it's going to be connected to the greater universe and like there's going to be a, a reference here and there. But something that isn't so heavily connected to what came before would be that would be truly exciting. Mm -hmm. But of course, the one time they tried that, everybody hated it because there was a purple haired woman telling everybody that they were babies. <laughs> but I'm that's none of my business. I'm not getting into it. I'm not getting into it. We're going to move on very quickly yes. to uh, there's a steamed hams adventure game. <laughs> Is this real or is this a fan thing? Oh, it's a fan creation. This a, it's a fan thing, but I mean, how can I not talk about it? Mm -hmm. When I Googled steamed hams, the Google said, did you mean steamed clams? <laughs> there should be enough Google searches where they know. Yeah. I, uh, where is it? Yes. Uh, steamed hams, the graphic adventure is a fan creation by Neo Demet. Built with the adventure game studio to easily, uh, to closely resemble classic LucasArts adventures such as Maniac Mansion and Monkey Island. Just instead of thinking of the right comebacks to prevail in, a, in an insult sword fighting duel, you have to think of the right implausible excuses for Skinner to use in response to Superintendent Chalmers' questioning. You can play the whole thing right now in your browser over at Game Jolt. So, do you think. So, there must be different endings. Like. Maybe you could get him out of the situation. Well, I guess the only way he got Maybe. out of the situation was the actual situ was the way he did it. He did get out of the situation. Uh, according to this, it's a very focused project. You can't sneak out of Skinner's window to explore Springfield at your leisure and try to go off script. Uh, but it, what it does do, it, it does extremely well. Oh, and if the character sprites look familiar, that's because they were lifted from the Simpsons arcade game. Um. I mean, this is, looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, I want to note that uh, on Google Trends, steamed hams and steamed clams is pretty comparable. 
<laughs> like that like like steamed clams isn't that much more popular than steamed hams. On average, right. steamed hams has a 16 and steamed clams have a, has a 34. But the chart mm. looks pretty close. Yeah. Uh also will real quick. Yes, Bob. Do you have a package? Like at your door I right have now. Yes. Uh I don't know. Why don't should you go, go check? look? You should go look. All right, I'll be right back. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to say the last thing, which is Halo's trailer brings Master Chief to sci-fi Odyssey live action. I really don't care. I mean, I do care. It did look... The first trailer I saw looked awesome. I heard that um, Cortana doesn't look that good in this, though. I'm a little afraid to play this like I'm going to get copyright striked. I'm assuming Cortana is going to be towards the end. I saw a picture and she didn't look blue. She's just not blue. Okay. Well, that's going to be a problem for me. I need her to be blue. You don't understand. Uh, can Kevin Kenson confirm whether he is in the new Pokemon game? Oh, what? Oh, because he's got a, there's a guy with a beanie. Cause every man with a beanie is Kevin Kenson. Where I didn't see Cortana. Probably because I skipped through the whole damn thing. I mean, it looks pretty cool. Will did get a package. We're up to the Halo trailer? Yeah, I kind of just skimmed through it. What do you think about Cortana not being blue? I don't care. I mean, that's the same actress from the games. My biggest criticism about this about it is that it looks like a TV show. Yeah, it kind of does. And I think I'm I think I'm spoiled from like high quality stuff. Like I didn't watch Game of Thrones, but like I've seen enough of it. Like it didn't it looked like a movie. Same thing with like you know Disney Plus's stuff and Netflix's right. stuff. You know the quality of TV, of high concept TV shows is getting much better. And while the Master Chief suit looks impressive and whatnot, this looks like nothing too dissimilar from like a late 90s Star Trek show. You're right. It does look a little weird. Hopefully yeah. it's good enough besides that where the budget could be a little higher next time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there was a package outside my door. It was uh, it's from Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what this is. It is an Xbox controller box. Oh! <laughs> if for the for the podcast listeners that is a li very very limited wonder woman xbox controller oh my god i could cry <laughs> beautiful kevin was Dude, getting kevin. rid of a bunch of stuff and he knew exactly where that one needed to go oh wow <laughs> thank you so much oh i don't ever want to play with this i just want to display it no that goes on that goes on a uh one of those uh little stands in a glass case yeah yeah i gotta i gotta get a nice stand for this oh my god thank you so much kevin this said so i figured bad. you'd make a better home for it absolutely i absolutely. don't know how many of those were made but very very either. little yeah oh it came with uh what else is this Oh, a bunch of stickers. A bunch of Star Wars stickers. Oh, that's cute. And then a Soka pen. Oh, thank you so much. This is so nice. Yay. Thanks, Yay. Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. What a perfect what perfect timing. Yeah. I was a little worried. Never mind. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you later. I, I wasn't. <laughs> uh anyway. Uh we can, you know, this is the end of the show. We're going to do one of these. Quit okay. of the week, quit of the week, quit of the week. Christine included some new merch. Some of, oh, that's hers. Christine made oh. those. His, his oh. wife made those. Some very good stuff. Thank um, you so much. That's awesome. And where can you get those stickers, Kevin? Are they up yes. somewhere? Drop the link. <laughs> anyway, here's the tweet of the week. Uh, it is... Uh, it's a quote tweet. The quote says, uh, the rise of podcasts truly convinced men that every random thought they have on the toilet is a microphone worthy thought. And then here's a comic that's like, you know, like the friggin' uh, crow 
who's telling jokes at a comedy club. Yes. And his joke is, men like podcasts. Boo, get better material. And then he's sweating and then he looks at his, his notes and it says, <laughs> a group of white men is called a podcast. <laughs> oh, that's The next good. one is men be like, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's true. We did ruin podcasts. We did, yes. Us, yes. Yes, we did. The worst part about us is that we think we speak for everybody. That's yes. the worst part. Yes. And no, I'm not going to change. Um, <laughs> all right, real quick, we're going to talk to our people from last week. Yes. Uh, last week on the podcast, we had Kevin, and we talked about uh, the main topic was Pokemon knockoffs. Uh and we had Jordan Rand on the YouTube video who says, I think the rock, I think the rock playing Kratos would make sense, although I don't see him having actually played the game like Michael Fassbender never playing Assassin's Creed. The problem with that is that I heard a rumor years ago about Goldberg, the wrestler, playing Kratos, and I don't think I'll be satisfied until that happens. So there was I think they about the rock said he's oh, he's going to do a video game movie but he's not saying what yeah but he's, he specifically said he's played the game for a, a long time yeah uh i think that the rumor now is it's call of duty i is... i think that that's most plausible because of how popular yeah. it is um i know like there are always rumors that like wrestlers are going to be like in the big budget movie version. There was a long time that Triple H was going to play Thor. Mm -hmm. And I think I remember the Goldberg as Kratos rumor, but no, <laughs> like it's very hard. Like the rock Batista and John Cena are like the only three wrestlers who like successfully crossed over. Everyone else was just one offs or shitty Hulk Hogan movies. I think the problem with uh, The Rock is that he's already uh, ruined the video game franchise in the movies. Doom. Two. Doom and Rampage. Although I've heard Rampage is fine. <laughs> Dreamer Tim from last week says, I never had issues with a PS5 turn me off right. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I asked Kevin. Yeah. And he claims that he never gets that message. He's also gaslighting me. Uh <laughs> Oh, this guy, Dreamer Tim says, I never had that issue until I installed an M.2 SSD. Ooh. Now it happens every time I turn it off and move it. It happened, it maybe happened once when I did nothing with it, but the other weekend I took the console to a friend's house and every single fucking time it did the error. Maybe it has some issues with power delivery from the, some outlets. It seems like it's happening only with additional SSD. Maybe the surge protector I haven't plugged into. I don't know. Yeah. But again, I'll say the Xbox plugged into the same thing. Have you is there a way for you to plug it into something that isn't that surge protector and still have it hooked up to your system? Yeah. Or I could just plug it into an extension cord or something. Why don't you try that? See if it goes away. So right now it's at the studio because I put the side panels on it. Uh, also, okay. I turned it on and unplugged it without using the menu. So it's next time I turn it on, it's going to yell at me because I did right. it wrong on purpose. So, uh, but yes, when I bring it back here, maybe I will plug it into a different outlet and see what's up. Oh, Kevin linked uh, in the chat uh, Christine's uh, website where you can get these lovely stickers. Yeah, here it is. Everybody, go buy things and send Everybody her. Money. Go buy things. They're they're not expensive at all. Uh, anyway, uh, Patrick House says The Rock is going to be Koopa Troopa in the Mario movie. Change my mind. <laughs> uh, no, he, he's gonna, they're going to save The Rock for the sequel and mm -hmm. he will. No, no, I can't do that because Mario, it's not like Batman where every sequel is a new villain. Mario, it's the same villain every time. Yeah. I think he would make a good Gaddon, but uh, we don't know if that's yes. going to happen. Yes. Uh, Disco Stew. Disco Stew says uh, Eris Aerith from Final Fantasy uh, 7 is a good example of name translation slash localization issues. Oh, Eris yes. versus Aerith. 
I forget which one is which, but I know that Aerith is, that's a, is English. Deal. Yeah. Because Aerith is what I know her as. Yeah. Uh, Shane Martin says the mental image of Bob skipping out of a store after being validated on his enunciation of Mario. Okay, so <laughs> last Monday I was in Pennsylvania and I went to a retro game store and they were talking about how to pronounce Mario and they were all saying that they say Mario. Right. But to be fair, one of the guys behind the counter was like a 60 year old like man who sounded <laughs> like uh, you know, like a like a New York guy. Um, but I did feel validated and I did skip out of that store. Anyway, we'll move to the chat now very briefly. I have to yeah. be very bad, just like every podcast. Um, uh, Sorry, I'm stroking out already. Aris uh, was OG English localization. Really? Aris is remake official globally. I've only ever heard Aris. Well, that's like similar enough. You can get it confused. It's not like, you know, uh, it, in in America, he was Robotnik all the way up until uh, Sonic Adventure 1 when he became Eggman again, like it was in Japan the whole time. Mm -hmm. Bob, did you know you're quoted in the new trailer? Yes, we brought it up before. Uh, I'm yeah. very happy about that. That was Celia's doing, though. We, we had an in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey, Will, congrats on your boy. Have you checked out Thank Batman you. the Night or the new Ben Riley Spider-Man run? Uh, I don't remember. Is Batman the Night the one Chip Zdarsky's doing? Um, because if that's the one, I do want to check that out. Uh, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, and I have not been reading the Ben Spiley Spider-Man run because I don't really care about Ben Riley as Spider-Man. <laughs> Bob, did you know you just said you received a DMCA note? Did you know you just said, yeah. What? What's the problem? I got it for for the, the game DMCA Royale. <laughs> but it was probably some music. I don't know why. What are you, what are you trying to say to me? Yeah. Bob, you can upgrade your Retroid Pocket 2 to the 2 Plus by just getting the motherboard and not needing to the full unit. Yeah, but all of the other stuff that you get all the other upgrades besides the board makes it worth it. Like a touch screen, like a touch screen is kind of necessary. So, right. um, it ends up being worth it to just get a whole new fucking unit. Honestly, especially for me who doesn't want to do any of the work. Yeah. Um, the advertiser pronounces Mario like Bob in this old commercial. There are a lot of commercials that pronounce Mario all different ways. Yeah. Uh, we better not get a strike for this one. Mario, where are you? It's Atari Mario Brothers with Mario. Mario. Kong, his brother Luigi, Mario. There you go. And it's twice the fun when two play at once because you need all the slap a like on that one. I feel validated again. Mario, where are you? Atari 5200 version show. Oh, that's interesting. That's a relic. I don't think we have to worry about getting striked for that. It's Atari. Yeah. Uh, Edward Bova sent a link about... Uh, apparently, Jeff Keeley tweeted, I have heard from multiple people, as you might suspect, there are a few other big video game deals in the final stages of negotiations. It's going to be an interesting year. Yeah, when, when the Activision acquisition happened... Somebody tweeted like, and this isn't even going to be the biggest news of the week. That guy ended up being fucking wrong. But what right. else could he have been talking about? I'm sure there are going to be, you know, other mergers and acquisitions happening this year. Right. But I don't think there. I mean, I'll be shocked if there's going to be any more big ones. Like, obviously, Microsoft buying Activision is huge. Sony buying Bungie is also pretty big. Right. But like I just don't see anything being on that level anytime soon. I feel like uh Nintendo's valued lower than Activision, but if somebody bought them that would be a bigger deal. Yes. But I I just don't know if they want that. Yeah. No. I mean, Nintendo like they're very, you know, 
feet in the ground. We will do this our way type of company. Wait, Kevin says, oh, that was Witta talking up his Wordle clone, Loodle. I just today learned that Loodle <laughs> was him. Uh, is that oh, true? Yeah. Is that is that the guy I saw? Because he's like a, you know, he's like a, a games journalist. So him saying that, it's not very funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very uh, funny. What's his Twitter? Hey, what a Oh, I left the H out. There he is. Oh, wait, that's not him. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, anatomically, the head looks fine to me in these images. What are you talking about? <laughs> Give me something I'm good to read or I'm going to go pee, guys. Okay. Uh, Kate McCat, I feel like if anything, Nintendo will be doing the buying, maybe like Sega or something. So they're saying Nintendo wouldn't get bought. If anything, they would be doing the buying. Uh, yeah, I feel like Nintendo is, is way too comfortable being, uh, the independent and being able to do whatever they yeah. want. Also, the stake they have in the Pokemon company is probably worth a lot more than what their company is technically valued at. Yeah. Um, I... there is S. Marcy's talking about how John Romita Jr. is doing a new Spider-Man run, and uh, he's yeah. uh, shitting on the the art kind of. I feel like John Romita Jr. His best work was at Marvel, and in particular on Spider-Man. Something about when he went to DC, he's just like, let's just throw anatomy out the window. <laughs> yeah, some of his stuff is really bad. Yeah. But uh, some of it's, I like some of it. Yeah, like, like I said, it, it, when he draws Spider Man, it's like, okay, I have to be good because my dad is one of the greatest Spider Man illustrators of all time. Oh, right. It's one of those things like, up. yeah, yeah, he got like, he he got it through inheritance. S. Marcy says he yeah. does like the way it looks though so far. So maybe okay. I was wrong. Uh, uh, Cthulhu Cultist says, Wolf Den piss jugs when? <laughs> We do need that. It is necessary. Yeah. Uh, we'll let you know after tonight. Uh, I think we're good, right, guys? Thanks for being yeah. here, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Boys, we're going to go watch Scootish. Uh, he is playing Pokemon. Uh, it looks like he's Tor like he it looks very spoilery. So uh, if you're worried about spoilers <laughs> for Arceus, uh, look away. Otherwise, go say hi to Jackson. This looks like a fucking yeah. final boss or something. Oh, this looks cool, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, we'll see you later. I might stream on YouTube tomorrow from the Clips channel. Ooh. Throw you a friggin' wild card. Otherwise, we'll see <laughs> Twitch on Thursday, probably. Uh, Thanks for being here. Bye, everybody. Bye.